Hi friends. This is Dragon Lord ASMR. It's good to meet all of you. I owe a lot to the ASMR community as well as the Magic the Gathering community. So I thought that I would do my first ASMR video and I would theme it around Magic the Gathering. Today I thought that I would show off my favorite commander deck. It's not in any particular order, but I thought that I would go through all of the cards with you. This is my blue and white Dragonlord Ojutai deck. My commander is Dragonlord Ojutai. It costs three, a white, and a blue for a 5-4 flying legendary creature, Elder Dragon. Dragonlord Ojutai has hexproof as long as it is untapped. And whenever Dragonlord Ojutai deals combat damage to a player, you look at the top three cards of your library. You put one of them into your hand and the rest onto the bottom of your library in any order. So I've had this deck for a very long time. It's actually the first commander deck that I ever built. It started as a mono blue commander deck and control has always been my favorite type of constructed deck to play. As the years went by, I filled this deck with a bunch of my favorite cards that went into different control, uh, different control decks that I played over the years. And Dragonlord Ojutai is one of my favorite creatures of all time, so I thought it only fitting that he would command it. Now let's go through the cards in the deck itself. The first is an irrigated farmland. It is a land that counts as a plains and an island. Irrigated farmland enters the battlefield tapped, and you can pay two mana to cycle it, which means that you would discard this card to draw a new card. Next is Sea of Clouds. It is a land, and it taps for white and blue, and it enters the battlefield tapped unless you have two or more opponents. Normally in constructed magic, it's only one versus the other player, so this wouldn't be very good. But in most commander games, you play with a bunch of friends. A lot of the time, the most common group of commander players will be a group of four. Uh, in that case, this is a very good land, since it comes in untapped with no downsides. Next up, we have Ghostly Prison. It is two colorless and a white for an enchantment. Creatures can't attack you unless their controller pays two mana for each creature they control that's attacking you. This makes it very good at defending yourself and also at persuading other players to not attack you. If you have other opponents that, you're, uh, that your opponents could potentially attack, why would they attack you if they have to pay two mana for each of their creatures when they could just attack the person sitting next to you? So not only is it functional, it's also really good at persuading your opponents uh, kind of mentally away from attacking you. Next, we have Jace, Vryn's Prodigy. He is one colorless and a blue mana for a legendary creature, Human Wizard. He has zero power and two toughness, and you can tap him to draw a card and then discard a card. If there are more, if there are five or more cards in your graveyard, you exile him, 
and then return Jace Friend's prodigy to the battlefield, transformed under his owner's control. So in that case, you would take him out of the sleeve and flip him over into Jace Telepath Unbound. This is a Planeswalker. His plus one ability says up to one target creature gets a minus two power until your next turn. His minus three says you may cast target instant or sorcery from your graveyard this turn. If that card would be put into your ex into your graveyard this turn, exile it instead. And his minus nine says you get an emblem with whenever you cast a spell, target opponent puts the top five cards of his or her library into his or her graveyard. This card is great in the deck because at the beginning of the game, it can help you find whatever you need with the draw and discard effect. So if you're looking for lands to play, or if you're looking for answers to an early threat, it can potentially help you dig and find whatever you need. And then as the game progresses, it turns into a powerful planeswalker that can rebuy you a spell, or buy you time against a creature, or even potentially threaten a really powerful ultimate that can win you the game. It's definitely one of my favorite cards to have in the opening hand whenever I play this deck. Next up, we have Generous Gift. This is a white instant. It costs two colorless and a white mana. It destroys target permanent, and its controller creates a 3-3 green elephant creature token. So it's very useful as a three mana answer to any problem that you may have. And a three, three creature in the grand scheme of things is usually uh, a lot better to deal with than whatever scary thing that this got rid of. Next we have Hollowed Fountain. This is a land, it also costs counts as a plains and an island. It taps for a white or a blue, and as Hallowed Fountain enters the battlefield, you may pay two life. If you don't, Hallowed Fountain enters the battlefield tapped. This is the Shockland for Azorius, and it is a really nostalgic card for me. I actually got these really close to whenever I started playing the game, and uh, I've kept my playset of these Return to Ravnica Hallowed Fountains ever since I first got them. Next we have Port Town. It's a land, and as Port Town enters the battlefield, you may reveal a Plains or an Island card from your hand. If you don't, it enters the battlefield tapped. So again, another blue and white land that can potentially come in untapped and be usable the turn you play it. Next we have Dovin's Veto. This is, a, uh, this is an instant card. This one costs two mana, a white and a blue. This spell cannot be countered, and you counter target non-creature spell. This is really good to answer any kind of non-creature threat that your opponent may have without them being able to really respond back. There are a few ways that they could potentially respond to this card, even though it can't be countered, but they're a lot more rare. Next we have Divine Reckoning. This is two colorless and two white for a sorcery. Each player chooses a creature he or she controls. Destroy the rest. And it has flashback for five colorless and two white, which means you may cast it again from your graveyard, and then you exile it after you flash it back. This is really useful because there's not very many creatures in the deck, 
usually my commander is the only one that will be out. So for me, it doesn't really have very much of a downside, but especially against opponents that are trying to fill the board with creatures, it can set them back really far if they have to choose only one to keep. Next we have Counterspell. It is two blue for an instant. Counter target spell. Not much more to say about that. Next up we have an island. I really like these full art islands. I also have the same uh, set for the full art planes in my deck. Just a little bit of added bling, I guess. Next up we have Mana Drain. This is two blue for an instant. Counter target spell. At the beginning of your next main phase, add an amount of colorless mana equal to that spell's converted mana cost. This is a really powerful counter spell that can set you really far ahead early, uh, especially if you do something like, um, you know, play this on turn two to counter your opponent's three drop and then give yourself three mana and immediately play Ojutai. Overall, just a very, very powerful card to have at your disposal. Next, we have Memory Deluge. This is two colorless and two blue for an instant. You look at the top X cards of your library, where X is the amount of mana spent to cast the spell. Put two of them into your hand, and the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. And it also has flashback for seven total mana. So the first time you play this, you look at the top four and pick two to go to your hand. And once you flash it back, you look at the top seven to give you a little bit more card selection. Next, we have Solemn Simulacrum. This is four colorless mana for an artifact creature, Golem. It has two power and two toughness. When Solemn Simulacrum enters the battlefield, you may search your library for a basic land card and put that card onto the battlefield tapped, and then shuffle your library. When Solemn Simulacrum dies, you may draw a card. Very useful to get extra lands out. Next, we have Commander Sphere. This is three colorless for an artifact. You can tap it to add one mana of any color in your commander's color identity, which for us would be blue and white. And you can sacrifice it to draw a card. This is really useful because you can play it on turn three to get Ojutai out one turn faster and then sacrifice it later if you don't need the additional mana. Next we have Return to Dust. This is two colorless and two white, four total, for an instant, exile target artifact or enchantment. If you cast this spell during your main phase, you may exile up to one other target artifact or enchantment. This card is great because it gives you a little bit of selection between what you want to do. If you need an instant speed reaction, it will do that for you. But you can also cast it during your main phase so that you can get rid of two things instead of one. Next we have Jace, Unraveler of Secrets. This is a Planeswalker. It comes in with five loyalty and costs three colorless and two blue. Its plus one ability is to scry one and then draw a card. Its minus two says return target creature to its owner's hand. And its minus eight says you get an emblem with whenever an opponent casts his or her spell each turn, counter that spell. This one is fantastic because it can both give you extra card draw, it can return creatures that are problematic for you, and then also the ultimate is incredibly powerful and will usually lead to you winning the game if you get it off. 
Next, we have Myriad Landscape. It is a land that enters the battlefield tapped. It only taps to add a colorless, but you can pay two and tap it and sacrifice Myriad Landscape to search your library for up to two basic land cards that share a land type and put them both onto the battlefield tapped, then shuffle your library. Since we're not in green, we don't have access to really good uh, mana ramp, so this land can act as mana ramp sometimes if you need it, effectively costing three to get an additional land out. Next we have Sphinx's Revelation. This is an X spell, which means you can pay any, um, any number of mana that you have uh, additionally into the X cost to boost what the spell does. This one costs X, white, blue, blue for an instant. You gain X life and draw X cards. So if you were to put seven mana into this card total, you would draw four cards and gain four life. This is a great way to get back into the game if you're low on cards, because you can play this at the end of your opponent's turn, draw a bunch of cards, and then untap your lands with access to all of those new cards you just drew. Next up, we have Soul Ring. It's a one mana artifact that taps to add two colorless to your mana pool. Any of you Commander fans out there will know that this card is a signature in almost all Commander decks. It's a very powerful artifact that you love to have in your opening hand. Next up, we have Duelist's Heritage. This is two colorless and a white for an enchantment. Whenever one or more creatures attack, you may have target attacking creature gain double strike until end of turn. This is fantastic in our deck, both because we can give Ojutai double strike to get two triggers whenever he hits to look at the top three and choose a card to go into our hand. As well, we can use it politically in our multiplayer games. If your opponent attacks someone other than you, you can bargain with them and say that you would give them double strike to not attack you and attack your opponent instead. Next up we have Mystical Tutor. It's a single blue mana for an instant. You search your library for an instant or sorcery card and reveal that card. You shuffle your library and put that card on top of it. This card is also fantastic in our deck because we have so many different options for what this could possibly go and get. If we needed to draw cards, this could find us a card to let us do that. If we needed to kill a lot of creatures, this would also let us do that. So the flexibility here is what's most powerful about this card. Next, we have another island. And then we have Battle Mastery. This is two colorless and a white for an aura enchantment. This goes directly onto a creature and gives the enchanted creature double strike. This pretty much always goes on Ojutai, again, just so that we can get those doubled triggers. A lot of the time as well, we're trying to kill our opponents solely with Ojutai, so dealing the extra damage with Ojutai for that commander damage through double strike can be really helpful to put more pressure on your opponents to find an answer. Next we have Enlightened Tutor. It's a single white mana for an instant, very similar to the Mystical Tutor we talked about earlier. It lets you search your library instead for an artifact or enchantment card and reveal that and put it on top of your library, same as the other one. Again, the power here is with the versatility. If you need a card or an, an enchantment to help you protect yourself, this can go get that. If you need an artifact that can get you more mana, this can get that instead. Whatever you need, it will provide you with...
Next up, we have Fierce Guardianship. This is two colorless and a blue for an instant. However, if you control a commander, you may cast this card without paying its mana cost, and it lets you counter target non-creature spell. In this deck, we almost always have Ojutai out, so this usually ends up being a free counter spell that we can use to stop our opponents from doing something that we don't want them to do. Next up, we have Sajiri Refuge. It enters the battlefield tapped. However, you gain one life, and it does tap for a white or a blue. There's not too many dual lands in this deck that always come in tapped, but I'm not made of money, so I don't have all of the ones that come in untapped and have to play a couple that do always come in tapped just for the sake of my wallet, I guess. <laughs> Next, we have Dismiss. This is two colorless and two blue for an instant. You counter target spell and draw a card. This is really useful in Commander because one of the downsides of playing a control deck in Commander is that normally, in a one versus one format, counter spells are only setting yourself and your opponent back one card. But in Commander, where you're in multiplayer, it can set yourself and the person that you're countering back a card but it won't set the other two players back at all and you'll end up being down compared to them cards like this though that replace themselves while also answering a problem are really useful next up we have disenchant this is a colorless and a white for an instant Destroy target artifact or enchantment. Sometimes in Commander there are really powerful artifacts and enchantments that you need to get rid of, and sometimes just having a cheap answer to one at instant speed is exactly what you need. Next up we have Mindstone. This is a 2 mana artifact that can tap to add a colorless mana. You can also tap 1 mana and tap it to sacrifice a Mind Stone and draw a card. Similar to Commander's Sphere earlier, this is a card that can give you mana early if you need it, and then you can sacrifice it later if you no longer need the mana so that it will replace itself. Next up we have Hengegate Pathway. This is a land that taps to add a white. However, it actually has two sides. The other side is Misgate Pathway, and it taps to add a blue. Whenever you play the card, you get to choose which side you play it on, so it can add either a blue or a white, depending on what kind of lands you're lacking. The next card is Talisman of Progress. This is two colorless for an artifact that can tap to add a colorless mana to your mana pool, or you can add a white or a blue to your mana pool. However, it will deal one damage to you. Since you start at 40 life, taking a couple of damage for the colored mana early really isn't too big of a deal. And once you have your mana well established through your lands, you can always use it for colorless whenever you'd like later. The next one we have is Glacial Fortress. Glacial Fortress is a land that enters the battlefield tapped unless you control a plains or an island. It taps to add a white or a blue, of course. I really like this art. There's been a couple other different printings of different art for Glacial Fortress in the last few years, but I'm really particular to this certain art. I just think it looks really neat. If you do look up the art yourself, you might not be able to see it here, but there's a very small man climbing all of these steps up this glacial fortress. Next up, we have Castle Arden Vale. This is a white land. It enters the battlefield tapped unless you control a plains. You can tap it to add a white mana, and also you can pay four and tap it to create a 1-1 white human creature token. In Commander, a lot of the time this uh, has a little bit of a niche use, but
but sometimes you can use it to create a 1-1 blocker whenever your opponents are attacking you with a big scary creature that doesn't happen to have trample. Next up, we just have a plains. This taps for a single white mana, of course. The next card is Opt. For a single blue mana, it's an instant that allows you to scry one and then draw a card. Scry allows you to look at the card uh, on top of your library, and then you may put that card either back on top or on the bottom if you don't want it. You scry equal to the numbers, so for this one, you would just look at the top card. But if you had scry three, for example, you would look at the top three and put them back in any order if you'd like. This card is really nice to have early, again because of just the early card selection. It lets you find a land if you need it, or an early answer. Whatever you need, it can help you find. Next up, we have Swords to Plowshares. This is a single white mana for an instant that exiles target creature. Its controller gains life equal to its power. Since we're dealing commander damage with Dragonlord Ojutai, we really don't care about the life gain at all. And uh, exiling any creature for one mana is an incredibly powerful effect. Can get rid of opposing commanders or really, really powerful creatures that are threatening you. Next, we have another island. And then a second island. Look at that. <laughs> Good things come in pairs, I guess. Next, we have a negate. This is a colorless and a blue for an instant. You counter target non-creature spell. We've seen several effects that are like this in the deck, but since we have a hundred cards, we just want a few of these in the deck so that we can deal with whatever nefarious nonsense that our opponents are trying to do to us. Next, we have Vanquish the Horde. This is a relatively new card. It costs a lot of mana at six colorless and two white, However, this spell costs one less to cast for each creature on the battlefield, and it destroys all creatures. In a multiplayer game, this first clause about how many creatures on the battlefield really comes in handy. This is very commonly a board wipe for only two mana. So even though it looks like it costs a lot, this is usually the cheapest and most efficient board wipe in the deck. Next up, we have Nimbus Maze. It's another blue-white land that comes in untapped. It adds colorless to your mana pool if you'd like, but it can also add a blue or a white. However, it can only add a white if you already have a planes, and it can only add a blue. Oh wait, no, I'm sorry. It can only add a white if you have an island, and only add a blue if you have a planes. I'd forgotten that it was actually the opposite colors and not the same ones. Next up, we have Command Tower. It's a land that comes in untapped and adds one mana of any color in your commander's color identity. Again, for us, that would be blue and white. Command Tower is, again, a staple of Commander. Um, it adds, even if you had a five color commander, it would give you all five colors and come in untapped with no downsides. It's a very powerful land, but of course, you can only put one in your deck. Next up, we have Open the Armory. It's a single colorless and a white. It's a sorcery that allows you to search your library for an aura or, or equipment card. You reveal that and put it into your hand, then shuffle your library. This will let you get any uh, powerful enchantment or equipment to put on Dragonlord Ojutai to more efficiently threaten your opponents. There's a lot of good answers and good equipment that this can go search for in our deck. 
we've already seen some of the enchantments that give things like double strike. So this could go get that. So we could put it on Ojutai and make him more powerful. Next up, we have Sea Chrome Coast. It's another blue-white land that enters the battlefield tapped unless you control two or fewer other lands. These are called fast lands. If you play them as one of the first three, they come in untapped, again, with no downsides. Next up, we have Preordain. Another early card draw, card selection card. This is a single blue mana for a sorcery. You scry two and then draw a card. As I was talking about scry earlier, this would allow you to look at the top two cards. If you wanted both, you could put them back in any order. You could put them both on the bottom, or choose one to put on top and one on the bottom. Then you would draw whichever one you had placed on top. Next we have Fabled Passage. This is a land that you actually only have on the field for a very short amount of time. You sacrifice Fabled Passage to search your library for a basic land card and put it onto the battlefield tapped. However, if you control four or more other lands, you untap that land. Sorry, not four or more others, just four in general. So if this is the fourth land you play, you can go uh, use this to go and get an island or a plains and put it directly into play untapped. Next up, we have Deserted Beach. This is basically the opposite of that Sea Chrome Coast card we had played earlier. It's a slow land. It enters the battlefield tapped unless you control two or more other lands. So if you have three or more lands, then this comes into play untapped. Next, we have Disallow. This is a single colorless and two blue for an instant. You counter target spell, activated ability, or triggered ability. This card is useful because it will allow you to answer many different things that could potentially threaten you, whether it's a, a, a scary spell or a planeswalker activation or a giant enter the battlefield trigger. This will let you deal with all of those at once. Next up, we have Ghost Quarter. This is a land. You can tap it to add a colorless mana, but you can also sacrifice it to destroy any target land. Its controller may search his or her library for a basic land card and put it onto the battlefield, then shuffle his or her library. In most of my games, I just use this as a little bit of insurance in case an opponent would have a scary land uh, and it taps for colorless mana, but... In a few cases, if they do have that scary land, you don't mind giving up one of yours to prevent them from winning the game with their big land or anything else like that. Next we have Cryptic Command. This one is a classic that I've played with for a long time ever since I started playing Modern. This is one colorless and three blue mana for a total of four for an instant. You choose two among these four options. Counter target spell. Return target permanent to its owner's hand. Tap all creatures your opponents control. And draw a card. Especially in a multiplayer game, this tap all creatures your opponents control option can be a really devastating effect. Otherwise, you can always use it to just counter a spell and have it replace itself, dealing with a problem. Next, we have Council's Judgment. This is a single, colorless, and two white for a sorcery with Will of the Council. Starting with you, each player votes for a non-land permanent that you don't control. Exile each permanent with the most votes or tied for the most votes. This card is really fun in a commander game because it plays very heavily into the politics. You can make deals with your opponents to have them each choose something so that you exile two or four different cards, or you uh, can just get rid of, if there's one scary player, 
the rest of us could just agree to get rid of their most problematic thing. Next we have another land, Celestial Colonnade. This one always enters the battlefield tapped and adds a blue or white. However, you can pay five total mana, three colorless and a blue and a white. And this land will turn into a 4-4 four, four white and blue elemental creature with flying and vigilance. And it is still a land. This can be pretty neat because it can block a bad creature or potentially threaten a planeswalker or anything else like that, and then turn back into a land and sit over here so it doesn't get hit by any removal spells or board wipes. Next we have Dig Through Time, another expensive card that can be reduced in cost. This is six colorless and two blue for an instant, it has Delve, which allows you to exile cards from your graveyard, and each one that you exile as you cast this card reduce its, reduces its cost by one. So if you were to exile six cards from your graveyard, this would only cost two mana. You look at the top seven cards of your library, put two of them into your hand, and the rest on the bottom of your library in any order. Again, more card draw and card selection to allow us to have the right answers to whatever our opponents are doing. Next up, we have Thought Vessel. This is two colorless for an artifact. It taps to give you a colorless mana and allows you to have no maximum hand size. A lot of the time with certain card combinations, we can end up with a really big hand in this deck. So having this out to let us not discard our extra cards can be really nice. Next we have Austere Command. This one is four colorless and two white for a sorcery. It allows you to choose two. You can destroy all artifacts, destroy all enchantments, destroy all creatures with converted mana cost of three or less, or destroy all creatures with converted mana cost four or greater. The flexibility on this card and allowing you again to choose what you destroy is the most powerful part about it. You can destroy all creatures if you need to, all artifacts and enchantments, or you can mix it up and destroy small creatures or big creatures or anything else like that. Next up we have Teferi's Protection. This is two colorless and a white mana for an instant. Until your next turn, your life total can't change, and you have protection from everything. All permanents that you control phase out, and exile to various protection. Phase out means that you pretend, basically, that they don't exist until your next turn. This can keep you alive if an opponent is trying to attack you for lethal, or destroy all your lands, or destroy your board, or anything else like that, this basically will just protect you from everything that your opponents are trying to do for the turn. It can be extremely useful. Next we have Snapcaster Mage. This is a single colorless and a blue for a creature. It is a human wizard with two power and one toughness. It has flash, which means you can play it at any time, that you would be able to play an instant. And whenever it enters the battlefield, target instant or sorcery card in your graveyard gains flashback until the end of your turn. The flashback cost is equal to its mana cost. So this would allow you to reuse one of the instants or sorceries in your graveyard whenever you play it. Again, it's a common theme that we've been talking about, but the flexibility of being able to replay a removal spell or a counter spell or anything else like that makes Snapcaster Mage a really, really good include in the deck. Next we have Supreme Verdict. This is a single colorless, two white and a blue for a sorcery. Supreme Verdict can't be countered and you destroy all creatures. Again, since we don't really care too much about 
uh, all of the creatures in play, and normally it's just Ojutai on our end, this can be really handy to deal with people that are getting out of hand with creatures on the board. Next we have Mindspring. This is two colorless and X for a sorcery to just draw X cards. Very similar to the Sphinx's Revelation we talked about earlier. This one is actually in the deck for a specific reason. I'll tell you about that whenever we come up to the, uh, to the card that this is in the deck to pair with. Mostly, this will allow us to draw a bunch of cards if we are out of cards in hand and need to refuel to get back into the game. Next, we have Disdainful Stroke. This is a single colorless and a single blue mana for an instant. Counter target spell with converted mana cost 4 or greater. In Commander, you're very frequently going up against big spells and big commander creatures and things like that, so this is usually a very versatile answer for whatever you need to counter that could be really large and threatening. Next, we have Solve the Equation. This is two colorless and a blue for a sorcery. You search your library for an instant or sorcery card and reveal it, and then put it into your hand, and then shuffle your library. Again, the versatility of being able to find any sorcery or instant that you need can be really useful. Next, we have Reliquary Tower. This is a land that adds a colorless mana to your mana pool and gives you no maximum hand size. Again, if we have extra cards, this can be really useful to help us keep them. Oh, it just started raining outside. I wonder if you can hear that, actually. Next up, we have a Plains. and a Temple of Enlightenment. Temple of Enlightenment always enters the battlefield tapped. When it enters the battlefield, you do get to scry one, and it adds a blue or a white to your mana pool. I would prefer if this came in untapped, but being able to scry one and set up your next draw is still pretty useful to have on a land that you can play for free. Next, we have a very interesting looking card. This is the dungeon module version of Hall of Storm Giants. This is, uh, if you would believe it, actually a land. If you control two or more other lands, it enters the battlefield tapped. It taps to add a blue, and you can pay six mana, and until the end of the turn, this land will become a 7-7 seven, seven blue giant with Ward 3, and it's still a land. So again, another creature that can turn into a land to pressure planeswalkers or attack an opponent while still kind of protecting itself. This is actually a really powerful and really useful big creature land. Next, we have Elspeth, Sun's Champion. This is four colorless and two white for a planeswalker. She comes in with four loyalty counters. Her plus one says that you put three 1-1 one, one white soldiers into play. Her minus three destroys all creatures with power of four or greater. And her minus seven says you get an emblem with creatures you control, get plus two, plus two, and have flying. If you played standard while Theros was legal, you know the power of this card. It can very commonly gunk up the board and block with all the creature tokens it makes destroy a lot of really powerful other creatures that are in play with the minus three ability or the minus seven if you have enough soldiers built up from her plus one can win you the game on the spot with that huge buff for plus two plus two and flying next up we have timely ward this is two colorless and a white for an aura you may cast this spell as though it had flash. If it targets a commander, it goes directly on a creature, and that creature has indestructible. 
This pretty much again always goes on Ojutai. It's really useful to have because it will let him stay in play through a lot of our board wipes that destroy all creatures. Next up we have Propaganda. This is two colorless and a blue mana for an enchantment. Creatures can't attack you unless their controller pays two mana for each creature he or she controls that's attacking you. You remember the card that we talked about towards the beginning of this video called Ghostly Prison? This is the same card, just in blue. <laughs> Again, very useful at persuading our opponents, our opponents to attack someone else. Next, we have Arcane Signet. It's two colorless for an artifact that can tap to add one mana of any color in your commander's color identity. We have a Plains. And an Azorius Signet. This is two colorless for an artifact. You can pay one mana and tap it to add a blue and a white to your mana pool. So essentially, it ends up just becoming another one of these mana rocks that adds one. Next up, we have Prairie Stream. It's a land that counts as a plains or an island. It enters the battlefield tapped unless you control two or more basic lands. We do have a good number of basic lands in the deck, so this usually does come in untapped. Next up, we have Shadow Spear. This is a one mana legendary artifact equipment. The equipped creature gets plus one plus one and has trample and lifelink. You can pay one mana to make permanence your opponent's control lose hexproof and indestructible until the end of the turn. And it costs two mana to equip to a creature. This card is awesome in our deck because it can both give Ojutai a little bit more power as well as lifelink and trample. And if our opponents have creatures that are indestructible, we can use that ability to make them lose that and then destroy them with our board wipes. Next, we have another Planeswalker. This is Teferi, who slows the sunset. Teferi costs two colorless, a white, and a blue for a legendary planeswalker that comes in with four loyalty. His plus one says to choose up to one target artifact, up to one target creature, and up to one target land. Untap the chosen permanence that you control, and tap the permanence that you don't control. And also, you gain two life. This is nice to untap Ojutai and a land and potentially a mana artifact. The minus two will let you look at the top three cards of your library, put one into your hand and the rest on the bottom of your library in any order. The same card selection that Ojutai gives us, but more is always better. And the minus seven says you get an emblem with untap all permanents you control during each opponent's untap step. You draw a card during each opponent's draw step. In a multiplayer game like Commander, this allows you to have so much extra card draw and extra mana on your opponent's turns, especially when a large majority of the cards in the deck can be played at instant speed. We have another island and an Adarkar Wastes. This is a land that allows you to tap it for a colorless mana or you can tap it for a white or a blue. However, if you do, it deals one damage to you. Still usually worth it for the colored mana. Next, we have Flawless Maneuver. This is two colorless and a white for an instant. It allows you to play this card for free if you control your commander, and creatures that you control gain indestructible until the end of the turn. This is usually played in commander decks that have a lot of creatures in play and want to protect themselves from board wipes, but in this deck it's useful because I can play it for free to make Ojutai indestructible and then play a board wipe and kill everyone else's creatures while Ojutai stays alive. Speaking of board wipes, we have Day of Judgment. This is two colorless and two white 
for a sorcery that simply says destroy all creatures. Speaking of board wipes again, we have Wrath of God. This is a two colorless and two white again for a sorcery that says destroy all creatures. This one, however, says that they can't be regenerated either. Next up, we have Swan Song. This is a single blue mana for an instant. Counter target enchantment, instant, or sorcery spell. Its controller puts a 2 2 bird creature token with flying onto the battlefield. One mana to answer any enchantment, instant, or sorcery that could be, you know, a big problem is really, really, really handy to have. And you really don't mind them having a 2 2 flyer, especially in a big commander game with four players. A 2-2 bird is not a very big problem to deal with. Next we have Teferi, Hero of Dominaria. This is another Teferi Planeswalker. This one costs 5 total mana with 3 colorless, a white and a blue. He comes in with 4 loyalty. His plus 1 says to draw a card. At the beginning of the next end step, you untap 2 lands. His minus three says to put target non-land permanent into its owner's library third from the top. And the minus eight says that you get an emblem with whenever you draw a card, exile target permanent and opponent controls. Each of these options are really useful for us, especially if we get to that ultimate. We can really, really take control of a game with that. Next, we have another planes. And a big commander staple for blue, Ristic Study. This is two colorless and a blue for an enchantment. Whenever an opponent plays a spell, you may draw a card unless that player pays one colorless mana. One colorless mana not, may not sound like much, but when it happens every single time any of your three opponents play any spell, it really adds up. This usually ends up drawing you a lot of cards unless one of your opponents destroys it. Next up we have Castle Vantress. This is a land that enters the battlefield tapped unless you control an island. You can tap it to add a blue mana, and you can tap two colorless and two blue and tap this land to scry two. It's pretty useful to give yourself a little bit of extra card selection if you don't have anything else to do with your mana. We have an island. And a path to exile. This is a single white mana for an instant that says to exile target creature. Its controllers may search their library for a basic land card, put that card onto the battlefield tapped, and then shuffle their library. It's not as good as Swords to Plowshares. Giving your opponent a free land is never really a good thing, but uh, a lot of the time, them having one extra mana can be a lot less of a problem than them having a giant scary monster that's about to eat you. We have another island. And Sentinel's Eyes. This is a single white mana for an aura enchantment. Goes directly on a creature. And the enchanted creature gets plus one, plus one, and has vigilance. You can also use the escape feature to pay a white and exile two other cards from your graveyard to recast this from your graveyard if it's in there. This is really nice as a repeatable way to give Dragonlord Ojutai Vigilance, since it has Hexproof if it's unt uh, untapped. If you give it Vigilance, it keeps Hexproof while it's attacking, which can be really handy. Speaking of untapping Dragonlord Ojutai, we have Minamo, School at Water's Edge. It's a legendary land that taps for blue. You can also pay a blue and tap Minamo, to untap, target legendary permanent. So if your Dragonlord Ojutai is tapped and an opponent tries to kill it, you can use this 
to untap it in response and give it hexproof. Next, we have another Planeswalker, Jace the Mind Sculptor. This is two colorless and two blue for a Planeswalker. Starts with three loyalty. He actually has four different abilities. A very powerful Planeswalker. His plus two says to look at the top card of target player's library. You may put that card on the bottom if you would like. If you don't want to deal with whatever you're looking at, whether it's on your library or theirs. His zero says to draw three cards and then put two cards from your hand back on top of your library. His minus one says to return target creature to its owner's hand. And his minus 12 says to exile all cards from target player's library. Then that player shuffles his or her hand into his or her library. So you get rid of someone's entire deck, and then also their hand, and their, their current hand becomes their library. That ultimate will usually just kill someone if you can get it off, but I actually find that I don't use that too often in this deck. Most of the time, I find myself just using the plus two to set up my own draws or to kind of hinder my opponent's draws. The minus one to bounce a creature, or the zero for a lot of card selection. Next up, we have Spellseeker. This is two colorless and a blue for a creature, human wizard with one power and one toughness. When it enters the battlefield, you may search your library for an instant or sorcery card with converted mana cost of two or less, reveal it, put it into your hand, and then shuffle your library. This card is really useful to have just because, again, it can search for pretty much anything that you need at the moment. The card I was talking about earlier that costs 2 and X, if I remember what it's called. There it is, Mindspring. <laughs> I forgot what it was called for a second. So you can go and get Mindspring specifically if you need to draw a lot of cards, because even though you can put 8 or 10 or 12 mana into this card, its converted mana cost is only 2, because X counts as zero while it's not being cast. This can also go and get removal spells like Swords to Plowshares or Path to Exile. It can go and get Disenchant if you need to get rid of an artifact or enchantment. It can get a counter spell or a mana drain. All kinds of powerful cards can be searched up and, and put into your hand based on the situation with this. Next, we have Search for Azkanta. It's a single colorless and a blue for a legendary enchantment. At the beginning of your upkeep, you look at the top card of your library. You can put it into your graveyard if you would like. And then if you have seven or more cards in your graveyard, you transform Search for Azkanta. And it flips over into Azkanta, the Sunken Ruin which is a legendary land that taps for a blue mana, or you can pay two colorless and a blue and tap it to look at the top four cards of your library, reveal a non-creature, non-land card from among them, and put it into your hand. So in the beginning of the game, it's an enchantment that can help you filter your draws and find lands or spells or whatever you need, and then towards the middle or end of the game, it flips over into a powerful land that can help you draw additional cards and find spells that you need to answer your opponent's problems. Next up we have Smothering Tithe. This is three colorless and a white for an enchantment. Whenever an opponent draws a card, that player may pay two mana. If they don't, you create a colorless treasure artifact token with tap to sacrifice that artifact and add one mana of any color. 
again, in a commander game where you have multiple opponents that are all drawing cards on their turn, this can be really oppressive, forcing them to either spend their mana to stop you from getting more, or putting you really far ahead with a lot of free additional mana. We're getting pretty close to the end. We actually only have five cards left. Next, we have Approach of the Second Sun. I really like the way that this foil looks. Approach of the Second Sun is seven total mana, six colorless and a white for a sorcery. If Approach of the Second Sun was cast from your hand and you've cast another spell named Approach of the Second Sun this game, you win the game. Otherwise, put Approach of the Second Sun into its owner's library, seventh from the top, and you gain seven life. This was a really powerful win condition card for blue-white control decks during the Amonkhet days. However, it's actually really useful, specifically with Ojutai's ability. If you cast this card for the first time, it goes into your library seventh from the top. If you then attack with Ojutai, you look at the top three cards and put one into your hand. This would be fourth on the fourth from the top in that case. Then, on your next turn, you would untap everything, draw your card for the turn. This would be third from the top. You could attack with Ojutai again, and you would look at the top two and approach of the second sun again. You could take that and recast it and win the game. So even though normally the flavor of the card is that you're supposed to wait seven whole turns before you can find this and cast it again, you can cast it on one turn, attack with Ojutai twice, and then cast it again the very next turn to win the game. This is probably the most common way that this deck wins the game, outside of Dragon Lord Ojutai killing everyone. Next, we have another commander staple. This is Cyclonic Rift. It's a single colorless and a blue mana for an instant. You return target non-land permanent you don't control to its owner's hand. However, it has overload for seven. You can cast this spell for its overload cost. If you do, change its text by replacing all instances of target with each. This card is incredibly powerful because you can search for it with cards like Spellseeker or your other cards that can find sorceries or instants. And then you can pay them, you can pay seven mana instead of the two to cast it to bounce all non-land permanents that your opponents control at instant speed. If you can do this at the end of your opponent's turn, and then immediately untap with all of your permanents intact, it's a really easy way to suddenly be very, very far ahead of all of your opponents. Next, we have Render Silent. This is a white and two blue for an instant. Counter target spell and its controller can't cast spells this turn. This can be really useful against opponents that are counting on playing a lot of cards during their turn. If you can tell that your opponent is about to get ready to have a really big, really powerful turn, this can put their plans in immediately, immediately stop their plans in their tracks and and really mess with what they're trying to do. The last two cards that we have are just lands. We have a Mystic Sanctuary, which is a land that counts as an island. You can tap it for blue. It enters the battlefield tapped unless you control three or more other islands. And if it enters the battlefield untapped, you can take any instant or sorcery card from your graveyard and put it on top of your library. 
this could be really nice because any of your cards that say that you go and get an island, so long as it's not a basic land, will let you go and search your deck for this and potentially get back one of your instants or sorceries. And our last card is just a good old island. Thank you so much for watching this with me. I appreciate you being here. Take care. Have a good evening. Sleep well. And I'll see you next time.